Hey guys, I'm Anna. And I'm Brian. And we are Those, Those Annoying Vegans! Happy 2020! Yes, This happy is our New first Year. video of 2020. Mm -hmm. We just got back from our wonderful holiday vacation in Costa Rica. We were visiting my family down there, uh, introducing Brian to them, and uh, just taking some R&R, &R, much mm -hmm. needed R&R. &R. <laughs> it's and amazing what some sunshine will do, huh? Yes, I mean, we say that as citizens of Southern California, so <laughs> people in like it England is, are going to be like, come on. Well, also, people <laughs> don't know that California gets cold. It does get cold. We in the are winter. a desert. Yeah. It is winter right now. No one's at the beach. It's 40 degrees every night. Mm -hmm. uh, it looks sunny. <laughs> it if you looks look sunny. out the window, it looks sunny. It's not warm. No. But Costa Rica, right near the equator, very warm. Mm -hmm. The water was very warm. Oh, yeah. uh, it's a, almost a perfect 12 hour day every single day all year round because uh, the earth is as we know a sphere. It was a, a very nice break. Yeah, say. there's oxygen down there. <laughs> they have, um, uh, what are they, uh, trees. Yeah. There's trees. There's trees, there's in Costa Rica. plants, like every everywhere. People don't have manicure, some people have manicured gardens, but for the most part, they just let plant life explode. One of my aunts literally has a rainforest in her backyard. Yeah. <laughs> You can't see it in the in the frame, but we've uh -oh. hung plants. We put plants everywhere. We're like, oh my gosh, we need plants. We need green in this house. So we put plants up here, plants over there, and over there. We have a, fir we have and a palm. palm. We have a palm tree down there. <laughs> yeah, and it's actually made us a lot happier. We've realized 2019 was a uh, was really was, it, was a year. Was it really? A it was a year. It was a year. <laughs> it was a year. That is factual. <laughs> It was one of my most challenging years, I have to say, mm. in terms of well, just all the things. It was probably our most active year as vegan activists. We attended many vigils, we hosted many vigils, we've rescued uh, nine animals to date from slaughterhouses. We toured Europe, we did some activism there, we've done marches, we got fur banned in the city of Los Angeles. Not we, I Not mean, we, personally, we but helped. As the vegan community, the vegan activist community helped to pass legislation, to change many, many hearts and minds, and it just seems to be continuing in that direction. I mean, it is January now. Of course, Veganuary is the big campaign every January. That has grown every single year. More and more people are signing up for that. Mm -hmm. More and more people are choosing vegan products over non-vegan products. The dairy industry is like kind of dead at this point. It's dying. <laughs> They're dying. Although we have to uh, clarify, uh, there was an article on CNN today that said that the dairy industry isn't dying, it's transforming, it's evolving. Mm -hmm. And basically what that means is people are still eating a lot of cheese and butter. Yeah. So in your activism, try to focus on that. That's going to be our, our next challenge when it comes to dairy. But as it goes for milk sales, well, they are in the toilet. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we have the fires in Australia, which mm. has raised even more awareness about climate change. Uh, we were already headed in that direction with Greta and all the marches and activism related to climate change. Now we have the likes of Joaquin Phoenix mm -hmm. mentioning animal agriculture in his Golden Globe Award speech. Mm -hmm. As a cause of climate change. Yeah, which is and huge. And people applauding. Yeah. So people seem to know, now whether they act upon those knowings is a different story. Clearly, individuals matter. I mean, what is a group of people if not a collection of individuals? And every single person's decision adds to the global change that we're seeing. Yeah, and, and granted, we're still a very small percentage, but mm -hmm. look at what's happening. We still have a lot of work to do, and so we will continue doing the work. Which brings us to today's video, ha -ha. which is as wonderful as it was that, you know, Joaquin Phoenix did mention animal agriculture as a cause of climate change, and everyone in the room seemed to agree. The Hollywood uh, foreign press, I believe, is the ones that made the decision to make the Golden Globes 100% plant-based. There are still people out there who uh, were not happy with that decision. <laughs> One of our Instagram friends sent us a video from a, I'll, I'll put farmer in quotes, because as you guys know, like a farmer would be someone who actually farms plants to feed to fellow human beings. We need farmers. Um, people, however, that 
forcefully inseminate animals and then raise their young to be slaughtered at a premature age, I don't really know that that qualifies as farming. That just qualifies as animal exploitation. And real quick, just before we get started, uh, due to some changes on YouTube, it is really beneficial to us if you're not only subscribed to the channel, but you set your notifications to all, and you hit that like button down below. If, if you like our content, if you appreciate what we do, if you get something out of these videos, please help us out. This video actually uh, was published on agdaily.com, and uh, this man's name is Matt Goebel of Dry Bottom Farms in Utah. So the caption here reads, Matt Goebel of Dry Bottom Farms in Utah has something he says he has to get off his chest. We understand, of course, because you're Ag Daily. <laughs> Matt goes into the statement by the Golden Globes, which were held this past weekend, that they were going meatless to help curb their environmental footprint. Wait just a darn minute. When you include the private jets and pomp of that event, being meatless, they have it in quotes, uh, should have been about the lowest things on people's minds when it comes to helping the environment. As Matt alludes to, it's mostly a bunch of Hollywood hoopla. So let's, uh, let's take a look at what Matt has to say. Let's and check out Matt's video. Discuss. <laughs> oh, everybody. Here it is, it's uh, 6th of January, 2020. And uh, some of you know, I actually work at Snow College. I'm in the agriculture department there, and I teach animal science and some machinery technology and things like that. But as I drive back and forth, I'm at my farm now, I actually live about 20 miles away, so it takes me 20 minutes to drive, and I take that time to think and different things. And I was just thinking last night about the good old Golden Globe Awards and how they went meatless to save the environment. Okay, let's start there. <laughs> yeah, so the Golden Globe Awards were not meatless. The Golden Globe Awards were 100% plant-based. So that means no butter was served at the table, no butter was in any of the dishes, there was no cheese in any of the dishes, no one was putting creamer in their coffee, there was no dairy, there was no eggs in any of the baked goods, there was no animal products whatsoever. And animal products come from animals, and animals have a huge carbon footprint on the planet. They take up a lot of water, take up a lot of land, they emit a lot of methane. You have to factor in all of that, mm -hmm. not just meatless. They said that up until December, they were going to serve fish, but then the Hollywood Foreign Press decided none of that mm -hmm. because they want to raise awareness about sustainability and climate change. In fact, all their vegetables uh, were local, uh, which is actually very hard to do when it comes to animals because animals are not often local. Uh, the animals that are killed at Farmer John here in LA, they're only locally killed. They're actually raised in Idaho, Iowa, South Dakota, all over the country. Well, it just doesn't even make sense. I got thinking about it. I'm like, okay, let's say there's 2,000 people there. If each of them ate three ounce, a three ounce serving of beef, that is laughable. <laughs> Laughably small. You must know that, right? People don't just have three ounces three of ounces. steak. Let us show you what we mean. <laughs> We've determined that this pack of cards actually on the scale right now, and I will film it using my phone so you guys can see. Make it ounces. We gotta go purely ounces. Okay, so it's zeroed in. Yeah. Uh, this, pa this is a full pack of cards. Playing cards. 3.15. 3.10 yeah. ounces, three ounces, roughly, uh, of meat. This is, this is what he thinks people eat. I mean, and this <laughs> is not counting, so not counting all the other foods that would have butter, eggs, mm -hmm. dairy in them. I mean, if you just think about it, like a quarter pounder, that's a pretty average hamburger patty size, quarter pounder. What's a quarter of 16? It's four, four ounces. He's estimating that people would eat less than an average hamburger patty. Yeah, Even yeah, filet mignons are like six ounces. Yeah. The average steak is like eight ounces, like an eight ounce sirloin. That's pretty common. Standard. That's more than double the ounceage that he is proposing that the A-list celebrities would have eaten at this banquet. That equates to 42 pounds of beef. Let's talk about his math for a second. <laughs> yes. Because uh, I don't know. it is questionable. <laughs> He said, let's say 2,000 people attended the Globes. Yeah, I wish I could start every argument by saying, let's say, and then insert whatever I wanted to say. <laughs> I don't know how he got that number. It's actually, it's not that far off. In 2018, about 6,000 people attended the Globes, according to Forbes.com. 1,300 guests 
of those 6,000 got to wine and dine and actually participate in the ceremony. So he might actually be underestimating how many people went, uh, mm. but he's overestimating how many people might have actually eaten. Yes. Uh, but let's go by his numbers. Yeah. Let's just go by, by 2,000 people mm -hmm. wined and dined. Um, yeah. 2, he said... <laughs> Times three ounces. That's 6,000 ounces. We convert mm -hmm. that to pounds. That's not 42 pounds. No. That's 375 pounds. I don't know where he got the 42 pound number from. It's, uh, it's <laughs> almost 10 times more than he asked. It's, it's almost an error of a factor of 10. And not to mention 2,500 gallons of water is needed to make one pound of beef. So if we go 2,500 times 375, that is almost a million gallons of water just for the just for the meat. animal flesh part. Now, if we were to be more accurate to the 2018 numbers in which 1,300 people actually wined and dined at the Golden Globe, so you have 1,300 people times three ounces, which is 3,900 ounces divided by 16 ounces, which is still 243.75, almost 244 pounds uh, of, of beef to his 42 pounds yeah. that he somehow I don't know how, I don't he, know how he came to that. That's not even a whole cow. He's being mathematical about it, but they don't have a cow sitting in the back lot uh, <laughs> waiting to be killed for everybody's steak. Yeah. The steak that people would have eaten might have come from different cows, yes, which means individual course. lives. And as vegans, we care about individual lives, not just numbers. And that's just mo and that's multiple cows also emitting uh, methane gas. Most of our carcasses are a lot more than that. I love how the sheep complained in the background. Yes. It was like, <laughs> no. Sheep's like, what did this guy just say? Not even a whole carcass? And if we get thinking about, okay, how many of those guys fly a private jet to get there? Hold uh, on. <laughs> virtually zero? Okay. Let's preface this with the fact that we live in Los Angeles. Yeah. Uh, we're pretty familiar with the world of acting. We are mm -hmm. actors. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been on set several times. We've been in the studios. We know that very, very, very A-list celebrities do have private jets, but those include, yes. you know, the likes of Tom Cruise, Angelina Jolie, and Brad yeah. Pitt, Beyonce, like, Ellen like DeGeneres, Jay Leno flies, Oprah. Flies private. Yeah, <laughs> we're not talking about like. The yeah. sound editor from from <laughs> Once Upon a Time in Hollywood did not fly there on a private jet. I, this is <laughs> okay. so ignorant of the industry. We know for a fact that most actors are L.A. based. Mm -hmm. Most actors. There are some A-list celebrities like Meryl Streep, for example, who live in Connecticut. Mm -hmm. uh, who some people live in Tennessee, uh, yeah. all over Jeff the country. Jeff Daniels lives in Michigan, I think. You know, some mm -hmm. actors live in New York. They can yeah. afford to fly over when sure. they're needed for a role, sure. But people literally move to Los Angeles mm -hmm. to become actors. Now, New York is also a relatively large market, but New York has always been known for uh, theater. That's why actors tend to go to New York for yes. theater, for Broadway. Mm -hmm. An anthropologist actually wrote an article on HollywoodSapien.com where he estimated how many actors are in LA versus New York. Uh, and he explains how he arrived at these estimates. And he says very clearly that he's very candid. This is at its best a very educated guess. Mm -hmm. So he arrived at an estimate of Roughly 80% of the acting work is estimated to be conducted within Los Angeles. The number of actors in Los Angeles is approximately 108,640. Compare that to New York where he estimates that there are approximately 18,963 actors in Actors Equity. However, Actors, actors Equity, Equity is, is for theater. theater. <laughs> and the Golden Globes is television and movies. So uh, SAG-AFTRA membership in New York City, he estimates to be at 28,963. So over 100,000 SAG-AFTRA members in LA, 28,000 in New York. I don't think it's unrealistic to assume that most working acting professionals live in Los Angeles mm -hmm. and the Golden Globe Award show took place in Los Angeles. So I don't think many actors would have flown a private jet from say Beverly Hills to Beverly, Beverly Hills, Hills, which is where the award ceremony took place. Or uh, even Malibu, or even Hollywood, or... Uh, I don't know. 
<laughs> it's just this private jet thing is a, such a huge assumption. Yeah. Like, like everyone in Hollywood. I mean, I think this is what people generally think yes. when they think about Hollywood. Yeah. So. Oh, everyone has a private jet. Everyone <laughs> lives in a shops mansion. on Rodeo Drive. Yeah. Everyone lives on the beach. No, uh, working in Hollywood is incredibly difficult. And uh, you are incredibly lucky if you have any amount of professional success as a working actor. And this is simply a, a ballroom in a hotel in Los Angeles uh, filled with a, a very small number of working professionals, the vast majority of which do not have private jets. Well, how much does that jet emit? So I looked it up. So if I said, okay, 100 of those actors flew there on a private jet, and let's say their average flight time was two hours, those jets during that time would emit 60, or let's see, 39,600 pounds of CO2 into the atmosphere in just that short amount of time. There's that sheep again. Um. <laughs> Why is he saying a hundred? A hundred of them own private jets? That's a gross overestimation. That's a huge amount of Look people. Look up online. You can actually Google who owns private jets. Now let's worry about it. They've got to drive a car to get there. Okay, obviously they've got, can't take the jet right to the Golden Globes or whatever. So they're getting a car. So let's say every... There's a thousand cars that drive there. Again, I'm saying, okay, there's 2,000 there. You know, they all got their limos. They can't share. They Maybe they ought to carpool a little bit. But uh, let's say there's a thousand cars that drove there. And that cars drove on average about 30 miles just to get there. Now, I'm only talking one way. <laughs> Hold on. Okay, so you're talking about from the it? airport? From LAX to the Beverly Hilton Hotel is 12 miles. Again, this, like... A, just throwing numbers out there, like 30 miles. Like, even Pasadena is 19 miles. I think you would have to go all the way to, let's say, West Covina. <laughs> Covina is about 30 miles. 30 miles, all okay. Right, so West yeah. Covina. You're just throwing numbers. You're just making up numbers. So one way, that's 21,000 pounds of CO2 that those cars emitted into the atmosphere. So on total, just... To get there, this is one way for all those actors and everybody to get there. That's 60,600 pounds of CO2 emitted just by their vehicles. That doesn't talk about heating and cooling of the building and all the other things that are there. As if farmers talked about heating and cooling of their buildings and all the water usage and waste and transportation that goes into raising animals for food. The thing is too is that he's like, oh that doesn't even include the heating and the AC for the for the theater. Like that that bill would have been there if anyway. they served meat or if they didn't serve meat. Yeah, that was all going to happen anyway. The point is they have now removed one of the things that would have also also been unsustainable. Obviously, what is wrong is that he is feeling threatened. Uh, that's why he's doing this, because yeah. what is wrong with people wanting to live a more sustainable lifestyle and to inspire others to live more sustainable lifestyles? That's what this was about in the first place. This is not mm -hmm. just the Golden Globes were meatless or plant-based. This is let's inspire everyone watching to mm -hmm. live a lifestyle that is less wasteful, that is more ethical, that promotes sustainability. I mean, even he himself, in bringing up the just the private jet comment, you know, Joaquin Phoenix received a Golden Globe that night. I would say Joaquin Phoenix is an A-list actor. Joaquin Phoenix doesn't own a private jet, and he even mentioned in his speech that actors shouldn't be taking private jets from LA to Palm Springs. This is sending a message to the world. Yes, they might have saved a million gallons of water just on this one dinner alone, but it's not just that one million gallons of water, it's encouraging others to do the same. For 42 pounds of saved beef, if they all ate a- 375, by your own estimation. Ate a three ounce serving of beef. Okay, so that beef, if a beef, let's say this, in a year, one cow emits 220 pounds of methane, and these guys say, oh, it's so much worse. Well, that methane is 23 times is what they say. So one cow for the whole year is 5,000 pounds. If we put it on the equivalent of CO2, we take the 220 times 23, that's 5,060 pounds. Again, you know it's not just one cow. It's not just one cow. Okay, two and a half ton compared to 30.3 ton. 
So obviously that's not the issue. Now, if we even took the cow just for the day and it's not a whole cow, it's 42 pounds worth, it's only going to be about 13.8 pounds of CO2 if we put it to the equivalent that is emitted. So it's stupid. I don't get it. It's all, it's all, the thing I see is this is where the animal rights activists come in and they've found another way, and the way that they want to make animal agriculture look is bad. And so they... At We're not doing that. You're doing We're that. We're not trying to make animal agriculture look bad. It, or it looks bad. <laughs> because when animals get their throats slit, that looks bad. Mm -hmm. That's bad. We're not doing anything. We're just showing people the truth. I mean, I get it. Animal exploiters are feeling threatened. They're mm -hmm. afraid. They see that people are changing their minds. People are learning the truth. They are blaming it on animal rights activists <laughs> because we're showing them the truth that they don't want to show people because they know if they did, people wouldn't want to buy their product. Mm -hmm. Product, because animals are not products. It's not hard math. 70 billion land animals and 7.5 something, let's round it up to eight. Eight billion humans all need fed. 70 billion land animals, we're feeding them. 8 billion humans, we're having a hard time feeding all of them. But we're tasked with feeding both. What if we only had to feed 8 billion humans? Whether the, whether the animal eats grass, which requires land, which requires water, which requires resources, or if we feed them you know, crops that we have to grow, which requires land, which requires water, which requires resources. 70 billion plus 8, yeah. or just 8. I don't understand when people argue that eating animals is somehow more sustainable or more eco-friendly. It just... It doesn't it make doesn't, mathematical it, sense at all. They attack it. They think that if they can get a global issue there and have governmental policy tell us and regulate us, that's a victory for them. When the science... Governmental <clears throat> policy? One, we're not trying. We're doing. <laughs> Two, it's a victory for all. It's a victory for animals. It's a victory for humans and human mm -hmm. health and pl the planet. Mm -hmm. It's that we're not against you. We're not against uh, animal agriculture employees. No, we understand that there's a demand and you're fulfilling the demand. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, and I would argue that this is fortunately, but if you're in the business of exploiting animals and the demand for exploited animal products is going down, that is unfortunate for your business. However, it is fortunate that demand for products that come from exploited animals is going down because we still need farmers. You know why? Because we don't want to be farmers. I would rather pay a farmer to grow my food and then I will buy it. We need that. Mm -hmm. Vegans are not against farming. We want farmers. We want more and more and more products to be on the market. We want competition. Uh, we want to inspire employment opportunities. I feel like if people that worked in the animal exploitation industry stopped viewing this as the end of a business, rather the beginning of a business, there are employment opportunities available yeah, why not get for in new on plant it. products. Get in on it now. Everybody knows that this is where it's going. Mm -hmm. Borbs, the economy, the economy is, it's going the vegan route, whether you want it or not. That's yes. just where it's going because social media, because activism is alive everywhere. Mm -hmm. And if you choose to stay where you're at now, you're gonna have a much harder time later when other companies who have who caught on fairly quickly, you're gonna have to find your spot rather than jump in on it now and be one of the leading businesses in the industry. And there are actually organizations that will help animal exploitation farms transition to plant farms. It's not unheard of, it's happened in the past, it will continue to happen in the future. Science simply is not there to prove it. So I hope there's enough people out there that understand that this is all a bunch of hocus pocus. The last person you should believe in is an actor and a celebrity because what's their degree in? Theater? Sorry, I'm not against theater people, but your degree's not in climatology. Your degree's not in agronomy or agriculture or natural resources. It's not your degree. So, again, think about where we're getting the information from. If there's a whole group of actors that are out there telling you to do something, you better look into it because, by golly, there's probably an underlying agenda. So, actors by nature have an agenda.
according to this gentleman. I like how he says he's not. Uh, he, he's he doesn't have any hate for for theater people, people with theater <laughs> degrees. As a person who has two degrees in theater, I appreciate that, Matt. Thank you so much that you simply think I shouldn't speak uh, about things outside of theater. I apparently, have, I have a degree in journalism, and I'm doing. <laughs> theater so this doesn't really apply you know people get degrees in all sorts of things and still choose to go into acting so mm -hmm. oh yeah that's another assumption that to assume that all the actors in the room have degrees in theater yeah no, no way. absolutely not <laughs> but also to insinuate that just because you don't have a degree in climatology or animal agriculture that you cannot educate yourself on the topic is mm -hmm. is hocus pocus <laughs> <laughs> It's, it's hooey. It's hullabaloo. Hoopla. The thing is, you guys, we've realized that uh, we've been lied to our whole lives. We used to eat meat too. Mm -hmm. uh, but once we saw what it took to put that animal flesh and, and, and animal secretions on, on the table, we no longer wanted anything to do with it. 99.9 .9 repeating percent of people are already vegan at heart. They already agree with the vegan message. Living a vegan lifestyle simply means you want to live a life that excludes the exploitation of animals. And most people already agree with that. That is why we have challenged numerous people to debates on the topic and they've turned us down. That is why people don't like talking about veganism at family get-togethers oh. or at holidays. That's why your non-vegan friends don't really want to talk about it with you because they agree. They agree with the vegan message. And it means they have to look within. They have mm -hmm. to take responsibility. They have to look at their own actions and that can get uncomfortable. So that's it for this video, guys. We really hope you enjoyed it. Uh, we were sent this video. We thought we'd do a quick response for you. Welcome to the new year. Um, we are, of course, on Instagram. If you'd like to follow us, see what we're up to day to day, you can follow us there. Check out our Insta stories. And we also have an Etsy store with plenty of vegan swag for you to peruse as well. And we just designed new stickers. Mm -hmm. So you will be seeing those up there soon. And of course, thank you so much to our patrons on Patreon. You guys really help us out. Uh, you've helped us support the expansion of Kindred Spirits Care Farm. Mm -hmm. They just closed on a new property uh, and we've been going on Saturdays and helping out. And you can follow that process on our Insta stories as well. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe, hit that thumbs up or thumbs down button. I don't care. Helps us out anyway. <laughs> and we'll see you guys in the next video. Bye! Bye. shirt that's right from little pine restaurant this is a restaurant that moby owns and mm -hmm. they just came out with these awesome new shirts and they have a bunch of other shirts as well yeah. and we love little pine we actually yes. go there uh, on special occasions because it is so delicious <laughs> and they make the best house vegan cheese I think or out the of best pizza. all yeah the best pizza I mm -hmm. think that we've had in Los Angeles but we love all vegan pizza, really. Um, <laughs> but the reason this place is so special is because every single dollar that they make goes to helping animals. Mm -hmm. They keep none of the profits. Uh, and you can read that on their menu, actually. If you're in the LA area and you have not been to Little Pine, what are you doing? What are you doing? Just go? Fly your private jet from your one bedroom apartment in Valley Village. <laughs> over the hill to Silver Lake and get yourself a, uh, a three ounce, more than three ounces of, of, ve <laughs> of vegan steak. I don't even know if they offer a steak. No, that is driving me crazy. Never wear those again while we're filming. I wear these every time. Yeah, but they, they click, 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 click. I hear it. Click, 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 click. <laughs> five years. Almost. It'll be five years this year. You know what my favorite thing is? One of my favorite things in life. Do you know what it is? Honestly. What? Making these videos with you. <laughs> I love that. I like it too. <laughs> is that good? Are we doing the thumbnail? Is that the thumbnail? Hold on. You want to do the th Do that and then I'll do that. Yeah. We're going to watch some of the Golden Globe nominated films because they're also nominated for Oscars. Yes. 
No, SAG AFTRA works. Or SAG. Yeah, yeah SAG. we get the SAG AFTRA. Uh, I'm SAG AFTRA, so we can get the SAG AFTRA movies in the mail. I asked her to marry me, and she said yes. So now I also <laughs> get the SAG AFTRA. I'm not supposed movies. to show them to you. Are you not? No. You're not supposed to. I'm not supposed to. Your world.